The decision to go FHA versus conventional is pretty simple. So simple, I'll explain it to you in the next 20 seconds. If you have credit challenges and can't qualify for a conventional loan, try FHA. The credit requirements are a little bit more lax. If you're looking to house hack and buy a two, three, or four unit property, go FHA over conventional. Your down payment is only 3.5% versus what can be up to 25% with a conventional loan. That's it. As you can see, this video is a lot longer than 25 seconds. So in the rest of the video, we'll talk about the inventory clause, the FHA self-sufficiency test. We'll talk about credit requirements, down payment requirements, seller perception, and a whole lot more. So let's get into it. Welcome back to House Rich, the first time home buyer show where we help millennials figure out where do I get started in real estate and how to build generational wealth. Today, we're talking FHA versus conventional. So let's dive into credit first. So FHA requirements state that the minimum credit requirement for an FHA loan is a 500 credit score. However, you have to put down 10%. So most likely what you're going to see from lenders is the other threshold, which is a 580 credit score to put down three and a half percent. Having said that, most lenders have what are called lender overlays, which are additional requirements they put on top of the minimum requirements. So most likely with most lenders for an FHA loan, you're going to need around a 620 credit score to qualify. But that FHA requirement of 580 still is available to you. You just got to shop around for the right lender. Same thing technically with the 500 credit score. You got to shop around for the right lender. Having said that, that 580, that 500, if you do find lenders that offer that, please be prepared to get hammered on the interest rate. So whatever you think the interest rate is now in the market, be prepared to pay above that as far as your rate. Because once again, what you hear in the news is the average, and that's taking it a high and a low number. You're going to be the high number that they're using the average for. Now for a conventional loan, the minimum requirements are a 620 credit score. So the other credit requirement where FHA is more forgiving is when you have outstanding balances on your credit report, such as like collections or charge off. FHA are more forgiving when it comes to the higher balances. Let's talk down payment requirements. So I always hear FHA has this low down payment requirement. That was true back in the day, but the conventional down payment is actually less than FHA. If you have a 640 credit score, your down payment is 3%. With the FHA loan, no matter the units up to four, your down payment is 3.5%. And as I mentioned before, if you have a 500 credit score, you can put down 10% and still qualify for an FHA loan, but good luck finding a lender that'll sign off on that. Now let's talk mortgage insurance premium, AKA MIP, which is similar to PMI on a conventional loan. It's the same thing, right? And so that stays on the loan forever. Unless you initially put down 10% on your FHA loan, it'll drop off at the 11 year mark. But most likely in your scenario, you're putting down three and a half percent. That's why you're going FHA, the low down payment. And so prepare to pay mortgage insurance forever, unless you, of course, refinance into a conventional loan. So that's why I say, unless you're house hacking or can't qualify for an FHA loan, you might as well just start with a conventional loan in the first place. And also at closing, you pay what's called upfront mortgage insurance with an FHA loan, which is typically as of right now, 1.75% of the purchase price. So let's say you have a $100,000 property. You pay $1,750 at closing. You probably never heard of this because typically this is rolled into the loan, but you essentially pay the, the upfront mortgage insurance when you sell the property. So who has the better rate? It depends on the pricing for that particular lender. Some lenders have higher FHA rates. Some lenders have lower conventional rates. But once again, if the rates are close, remember that the mortgage insurance premium on an FHA loan stays on the loan forever, which means in order to get it off, you have to refinance into a conventional loan, which means you have to pay a couple thousand dollars to refinance. So make sure you're factoring that in. If the, the interest rate for an FHA loan is like a quarter less or an eighth of a point less, remember you're going to have to pay thousands of dollars to refinance out of that FHA loan to drop the mortgage insurance. Now let's talk appraisals. I mean, if your home's worth $300,000, it shouldn't matter if it's an FHA appraisal or a conventional appraisal, right? Eh, not exactly. So here's the thing. 
An appraiser will come out and appraise the value of their home. They are not a home inspector. However, for an FHA appraisal, there's certain safety factors that have to be fixed when it comes to an FHA loan. And honestly, typically their minor stuff is there need to be handrails on railings. Electrical outlets have to be covered. But from a seller's perspective, or more importantly, a seller's realtor's perspective, they just don't want to deal with stuff that may have to be fixed in order to complete the loan or fund the loan. So they'll a lot of times just say, hey, two offers exactly the same. Let's just go with the conventional offer so we don't have to deal with this other stuff. Also with an FHA loan, the value that the appraiser comes up with sticks with the property for the next six months. So in an increasing market, realtors, once again, don't want to deal with that. So let's say you make an offer at home, you guys get under contract, the home is valued at $400,000 and you fall out of contract. With home prices going up like this, the next buyer still has the appraisal that says $400,000. Even if it's a month later, two months later, three months later, and home prices have gone up. So once again, realtors don't want to deal with that. So they're going to be like, eh, let's go with the conventional offer if the offers are exactly the same or sometimes even just close. Now this rolls right into seller perception. So the perception of somebody taking out an FHA loan is that they don't have the money for a large down payment even though, as we discussed, the down payment for an FHA loan is actually higher than a conventional loan. But two, more importantly, they're going FHA because they have credit challenges. Because why else would you go FHA, especially when you think about like the mortgage insurance factor when it comes to a FHA versus conventional loan? So that means that the seller is saying that, hey, this person has lower credit. They may not be as financially responsible as the person that's taking out an FHA loan. And that matters to the seller because if they don't think you're financially responsible or less financially responsible, you may be less likely to close on the deal. And that's really all they care about. So seller perception is a little bit negative when it comes to an FHA loan. Last but not least when it comes to the appraisal is the amended Tory clause. What it says is that if the home does not appraise for the value on the contract, the buyer can walk away from the deal at any point in the evolution and still get their earnest money back, no matter if that period has already passed. So that gives a lot of power to the buyer, right? So think about this. If the home is in the market for $300,000 and the home appraises for $295,000. So typically in that scenario, the seller and the buyer would just meet in the middle somewhere. But right, if the buyer has the option just to walk away and get their earnest money back and the seller now has to put their home back on the market for another month and pay another mortgage payment, that gives a lot of power to the buyer when it comes to negotiating the deal, especially if it's a, a large gap when it comes to the price. And once again, remember that price sticks with that home for the next six months. So the seller probably really, really wants to close that deal with the original buyer. Last but not least, if you're buying a multifamily property and looking to house hack, the FHA loan is the runaway winner. So once again, whether it's a one, two, three, or four unit property, the down payment is only three and a half percent for an FHA loan. And also, believe it or not, you can actually use an FHA loan to finance a mixed use property as well. As long as 51% of the units are residential, you can do like the bodega at the bottom and like the, um, the residential properties at the, at the top or some situation like that, right? With a conventional loan, no matter even if you're living in the property for like a four unit property, your down payment can be as high as 25%. So at that point, you might as well just buy like a investment property. There's the breakdown. If you're looking to buy a home in 2023 with a FHA loan or conventional loan, I love to be able to help you. I'm in the Dallas market, but I have connections in every single market that I've vetted and can connect you with trusted realtors and lenders. So hit me up. The contact information is down below. Uh, if you got value, share with a friend, tell a friend to tell a friend, leave a review. But as always, buy land. Rumor has it they're not making any more of it.